All right, so Wilbur here is trying my patience. <laughs> I got, he's lucky I love him. I got the wiring all rerun, and that's working. And now I have a huge puddle of oil in the floor that I cannot find the source of yet. Well, well, well. I think we found our culprit. This downpipe here comes off the crankcase breather. And I don't know where this bracket is supposed to be mounted. Um, I'll have to see if I can figure out. This other bracket on the pipe mounts right here on the front of my, uh, I don't know, on the front of the fuel pump there. Um, but this bracket had slid down. You can see it's loose. Slid down and it contacted the pole or the post on the back of the generator. You guys probably can't see down in there. Maybe you can. I can get the camera to focus right there. Maybe you can see. Oh, yeah. Come on, come into focus, baby. Right there. You can see that melted spot. That's the positive pole right there on the cable coming off the generator. So that's exactly as we discussed yesterday. Um, that bracket slid down and made contact with that pole. So now the truck immediately short-circuited because the truck is grounded to the frame. So that positive cable started feeding juice. You could say it went either way, but basically it made a contact right there. So that brown cable coming off the um, terminal there was basically going to dead short. So it was just creating a loop right through the batteries via that cable and then the frame of the truck. That's why this brown wire that goes back up and goes through that amp gauge was all melted. Now, why the starter switch got so hot that it leaked the grease out, I don't necessarily know because this current shouldn't really have been flowing through the starter switch. Oh, well, I guess it... I guess it could have. Um, it wouldn't have been the ideal path, but it could have flowed there a little bit. Uh, just enough to make it hot. But anyway, this makes me really happy to find. Actually, this gives me good causation, if you will. Is that the word? Gives me good reason to believe that my generator's fine, everything else is fine. It's just this stupid bracket worked its way down and made a short circuit, which is what my brother and I had discussed. He said, look, man, somewhere you had a wire rub or something. And he said, probably because it's melted all the way to the generator means probably your fault was really close to or at the generator. Well, there you go, right on the generator. So we're gonna move forward with these repairs today. I've got new wires for everything, bigger, bolder wires. Um, so, Hopefully, hopefully, we'll get her fixed and running today. All right, so we're just back together with Wilbur. I don't know if you guys can see down inside there or not, but the new white wire, red wire right there in front of you, those are our new control wires. And that is just red power wire from the master switch. And it is a white signal wire down to the starter solenoid. This new ignition switch that I got, I don't really care for it. Uh, it's not a true replacement for the one that I had. The one that I had had spring-loaded functions to either side. You had um, preheat to the left and start to the right and neutral in the middle. So everything as far as like accessory was controlled through the master switch. This switch here has a neutral, has an off position in the middle. You go to the left for accessory, you go to the right for accessory, and then you push to the right further for start. So it's got a couple accessory ports on it that I'm not using. Um, there's one port labeled ignition and there's one point labeled ST. I don't know what the ST is. The switch didn't come with any instructions. So if the ignition switch that I'm hooked up to doesn't work, then I'll try ST. I'm thinking ST for starter. I don't know. Anyway, so this is inside the cab behind the control panel. I got my switch just plugged back in there. I don't know if I mentioned yesterday, but I took this panel off the inside of the cab too, which was a huge help on uh, running the wires and being able to see what I'm doing on the back side of the engine. But the wires just loop down under the dash here and then come right back up and go through that hole. So they don't go through the factory grommet, but I mean, all of that garbage, as far as I'm concerned, those wires are all dead. I don't think any of them do anything. If they do, I'd be absolutely surprised. I guess I do still have a, well, I have an air pressure gauge. I have an air pressure gauge, but you know what? It's got a, it's got an airline. It's got an airline around to it. <laughs> so that would be how that works. Um, but I don't think anything else works. Anyway, let's uh, go take a peek on the other side of the truck here. 
get this stuff picked up so I can open the hood for you. Because I'm going to have to open the hood to show you everything else. Okay. Come around. I actually had the hood down just because there was actually a decent breeze. With the hood open, I couldn't get the breeze. I had to close it to get the breeze. All right, buddy. Come here. Come here. Oh, boy, that's loud. Okay. So, coming out the back of the engine here, on the back side of the engine, here's our white wire going down to the control on the starter solenoid. Our little red control wire jumps off right there and goes over to the master switch. That big red wire wraps around the back here and that's what runs down and hooks back onto the generator. So when the truck is running, that big red wire is carrying power back up here to the master switch and it's feeding through the master switch back to the battery to trickle charge the batteries. That was the wire that before, that's the wire that melted, that burned down. And the only reason that it smoked in the dash was because it was running back through the dash, through that amp meter gauge. Um, and that amp meter gauge was pigtailed pulling power off of that over to the starter control switch or the, the push button switch, if you will. So I've taken that amp meter gauge out of the loop for right now, simplified everything. Um, and now for the starter switch to get sort of overcharged again, if this wire were to fail, it would have to go through the master switch here and then it would have to flow back from the master switch it would have to flow over to the push button switch which just really isn't likely because then it would have to short all the way down through the starter sign and all that so highly unlikely that it will flow that route anyway um it's all wired up now i've got a couple i gotta put this little elbow back on for the air breather and i've got the crankcase breather I, the crankcase breather is the bracket that's shorted out on me um I'm gonna leave it off for right now at least to start the truck so I've got to clean up some tools here and I want to put this elbow back on just to try to help not suck any dirt into the engine and uh, then we'll try to give me a start all right so the batteries are hooked back up no sparks flew when I put those together so that's good that's a good sign that there's no more ground fault through the through the frame of the truck I got that air breather elbow back on I do not have the down pipe for the crankcase breather back on yet that's what shorted out on us which I will put it back on. I just don't need to right now to start the truck. So, moment of truth, I guess. <laughs> oh, let's just see what happens. I mean, like I said, I don't know if that button that I hooked up, I don't know if it's hooked up properly or not. But let's walk around here. Let's put our fancy new keys in. I don't really want this here. That's annoying that I have two keys now. So that's in the accessory position. Hang on, bud, you ready? Well, that's weird. The accessory position makes it want to start. I'm not sure what's going on here. Okay, master key's on now. Key is off, maybe? He is accessory. I don't know if I like that or not. Okay, so something's not right. Okay, so this is the off position then. Why won't you focus, you piece of garbage there? So I thought this was a back to accessory, but it's not. You've got off, accessory. Well, I mean, it could be, I guess, either one. But when you turn it forward, this is not... So that's not the spring-loaded position though. The, the spring-loaded position is what needs to be the start position. So let me unhook. I think the ignition wire needs to go, turn that off. I think the ignition wire needs to go to that ST pole and then I think we'll be okay. Okay, so we just rewired. You guys can see it now or not, but oh, why does it not want to focus? Rewired. Okay, so the ST, that's the pole on the back middle there. So our key now is in the off position in the middle, I believe, because I can take the key out. So if I turn back, that's accessory. So now if I wanted to, I could wire 
off that accessory terminal I could wire just lights or just whatever to be accessory. Forward, you've got the ignition. So that's basically accessory, but it's everything that you would want on for sure when you're running the vehicle. And then we're gonna push spring loaded to the right. Well, Wilbur's trying. Wilbur's gonna need a little bit of liquid courage. I think, I don't like to use it, but. Come on, buddy. That's the exhaust, bud. Oopsie. Now, see, that I don't like. That was my starter trying to stay engaged for some reason. Even though I turned the key off. So that is... Now that aggravates me. This switch just is not working now because I gotta turn my master switch on. It's trying to spin up my starter just like that. Shouldn't be doing that. That key is off. Oh, darn it. That could imply that my starter solenoid is sticking. Could be that my starter solenoid is sticking because it's wanting to spin it up but not engage it. Great, why not buy a starter for the truck? That'll only be a couple hundred more. All right, let me try to get this thing running at least. All right, so Wilbur here is trying my patience. <laughs> I got, he's lucky, I love him. I got the wiring all rerun and that's working. And now I have a huge puddle of oil in the floor that I cannot find the source of yet. It's like, it's like the oil's coming up through the wiring harness. I can see it welling up in the, in the dash, but I can't see an oil line anywhere that it's coming from. I'm sure there is one, you know, that's coming up to it, like for oil pressure sensor or for the oil pressure gauge. I'm sure that's what it's for, but I can't see an obvious oil line. What I've got now is a huge puddle of oil in my floor. So I've got to get all that cleaned up so that I can lay down in the floor and be able to actually look up under the dash here and see. Um, but I did get all the electrical rewired and fixed. <laughs> the issue now with the electrical is that my starter solenoid is wanting to hang up. So I thought before that my push button switch was bad because I would let off of it and the starter would keep cranking. But I'm thinking now, now that I've replaced that switch, it's still doing it. I think the starter solenoid is not letting go. So I have to start the truck and kill the master switch because that cuts all power. So that stops the starter cranking. Um, what in the, oh, <laughs> I saw dust rising up, thought it was smoke. It's my kids down here throwing dust. Um, so that start, stops the starter cranking. Then I have to get out, smack the starter solenoid with a wrench to make it disconnect inside, whatever's staying connected in there. And then I can turn my master key back on so that the generator will start charging the batteries back like it needs to. So that's a nuisance. That's going to have to be fixed. i got to move back over here so I don't get my shoes full of dust. Um, that's going to have to be fixed. And I don't know that it's going to... Hopefully it's just a solenoid. And hopefully I can actually cost effectively replace the starter solenoid on this truck without replacing the whole starter. Because it's a big, heavy, and will be expensive starter. So maybe I can get lucky and just replace the solenoid on it but anyway for now i've got the whole electrical short issue the original issue i've got that fixed um and i've got to get this oil issue fixed because this is just driving me nuts so let me clean it up let me do some digging around and i'll tell you what i find okay found the oil leak this line here i thought it was um it runs over to this gauge, and I think I mentioned earlier in one of the other videos that this was an air pressure gauge. It's not, it's an oil pressure gauge. So I got to rooting around, and it was the only line that I could find, um, but it's a plastic line. It's not a rubber hose. And so right here, oops, I'm blocking the light. What's going on here? 
Oh, what is going on? We, uh -huh. Okay, whatever. Right there in the center of the picture, you can see where that line is a little damaged. It's a little, little melted looking. And that's exactly what happened. That line was in contact with that brown wire that melted when the generator shorted. So it melted a hole in it. So, you know, related events, because the line melted, it melted the airline. Um, I've just got to see if I've got a way to patch this. It looks like about a quarter inch line and I'm wondering might actually have some little like irrigation fittings <laughs> I'm really not sure I need to see what I've got for just like a if I can just find like a brass barb or even a plastic barb um, and try to cut that out of there and then splice it um, I don't think I have anything to replace it with it's got to hold like 60 psi so I can't use the little rubber hose that I have for, for drip spray for drip irrigation um, and I can see it's got a connection it's got a connection right there where it switches over from a thicker line and actually that line's got some numbers on it like maybe I could it says looks like it says one quarter on it right there I'm trying I'm kind of upside down and backwards but I could just replace that whole line down to there it's probably just got compression fittings on it I'm just really not sure what what type of line that is so I'll have to work on it here a little more and see what I can figure out but I at least found the leak uh, I just need to find a way to block it up and isolate it well I thought I had it fixed kind of I was gonna cheat and use that quarter inch barb fitting for uh, drip irrigation that I have uh, I actually spliced it in there on the quarter inch line and it was holding. I don't know. I don't expect that it would have held for a long time. I just wanted to be able to start the truck and see, make sure everything else worked normally. Um, so it was holding, but then this little line behind it also started squirting, and it's like a eighth inch. I definitely don't have anything that size. This one was running to my oil pressure. This one was running to my oil temperature, which is a little odd because, I mean, oil is somewhat you know conductive of temperature, but. It's just a supply line to the temperature gauge, and I know the temperature gauge is broken anyway, but it seems like you'd wanna have supply and return to the temperature gauge to make sure that it actually flows, because otherwise you just get a little bit, I mean, in the winter you would have just a slug of cold oil that would push up to this thing, and I feel like it would take forever for it to actually warm up and tell you what your real oil temperature was. Anyway, neither here nor there. I do have to go to town now. I thought I was gonna get away with my little barb patch there, but I do not have the stuff for this uh, eighth inch line. So I'm just going to go ahead and go get all new, uh, new fittings, new line. We're going to get rid of the drip irrigator barb there. Um, both lines, well, the, the quarter inch line has a connection right here in the, right through that panel that I took off. And there's our eighth inch line. It did not have a connection there, but I'm going to go ahead and put one in. Uh, that way I can feed both the clean ends of the pipe down through the firewall here get them down there and put the flares on them and the connections on them uh, and then i'll be able to put the connections back on the back end up here so half inclined to just take them loose i know the oil pressure gauge actually works or at least it shows you something uh, like i said i thought it was an air pressure gauge and you would see it come up as the engine revs up um but no it's oil pressure Pfft, duh i think that's my air pressure gauge it's there anyway um I don't know about the oil temperature. I don't think it's working, but we're going to hook it back up anyway. So, got to run out of town here. Okay, we're back on it this morning. Got some hoses and fittings. Typical run to town in the afternoon. Got to go to two to three stores to find everything you need. Each store has kind of a little bit of what you might need, but never all of it. But, shockingly enough, Tractor Supply had what I needed. Well, what I'm using. Really what I need is steel tubing or a pressure transducer at the source and then wires, but I'm just replacing what was here. So I went to Napa. Napa had the eighth inch line and the eighth inch fittings, which really surprised me. I figured that'd be harder to find. And Tractor Supply had the quarter inch line and the quarter inch fittings. So between the two, I think I've got everything I need. We're gonna jump up here, try to get them all spliced in and I'll show you when it's done. I guess I'll show you guys these fittings I'm working with. These are the eighth inch dinky little things. And this is the eighth inch hose. 
I mean, really, it, it looks like it looks like a wire. It's tiny. So delicate process to say the least. Trying to work down in here underneath the, on the side of the engine and get these little tiny fittings on. But I've got the first one already on here replaced. So this is just a splice. So you have to you have to slide your nut on first and then slip that little ferrule over the pipe and then put them both into this splice and then thread back up. I really wish I could find a way to, to prop my phone and show you here. Maybe I could show you on this one, on this end. Let me see here. Oh, look at that. Balance my phone on the side of the seat. Let's get her over here where we can see. Mm, let, me, let me get a little extra line out of here. Hey, look at that. So we've already done up the other end that I just showed you. We take our nut, slip it on the line, take our ferrule. This thing is tiny. You do not want to drop it. Slip that on. And now we'll bring our other line over. Put your hose into the end. Uh oh. Put your hose into the end, slide the nut and ferrule up together. And it's just a compression fitting. So as you tighten down the nut, it'll squeeze on that ferrule and make a seal. So once you get a couple wrenches on that, torque it up, and that was done. So that's our splice on the eighth inch. We'll do the same thing on the quarter inch line. And then on the back end of both of them, um, up here on the back of the block, I've got a new um, a new nut and ferrule to go on the back end of the quarter inch. And ha I've got the nuts and ferrules and I've got I've got the quarter inch splice somewhere. I saved it. It's on the other line. Well, that's the nut and ferrule. Somewhere I've got a little short stob. Might be in my pocket. Anyway, I've got it somewhere that I've got the splice for the quarter inch. So we should be able to get it all put back together. He's got 